we should be doing a much more nuanced job rather than just wagging our finger at everybody and saying everybody should get the vaccine because vaccine good. At the beginning of this, I was waiting for some sort of guidance about the vaccine and people who had already been sick with COVID, right? Because there's an obvious question here. Now, let's take the most basic level, okay? Mm -hmm. People who have had COVID have effectively had a vaccine to this version of COVID, right? They have been exposed to those proteins. That's what the immune system is. That's why they got better, yeah. right? The point is the immune mm -hmm. system figured out the plan. The and dead ones, the ones who died of COVID-19, they have not effectively been vaccinated. They were partially vaccinated. But let's just say if you mm -hmm. recovered, if you actually had it and you actually recovered, the point is your immune system figured it out. Now, do we know that that will have the same lasting immunity as the vaccine? No, but we also don't know that the vaccine has lasting immunity. And there's every reason to expect it because what these vaccines so far are doing is they are exposing the immune system to the very spike protein in order that when the virus actually invades your system, your immune system already knows what it's looking at and attacks it. But here's the thing. So I was waiting for them to say, look, if you've had COVID, you at least shouldn't get the vaccine early. There are multiple reasons for this. One is you don't need to take the risk of the vaccine. The vaccine isn't just the spike protein, mm -hmm. right? Or the mRNAs that will create it. It's also the lipid nanoparticles. It's also whatever medium it's in. It's a lot of things. And so why take the risk if you've effectively had the vaccine? That's one question. Then there's another question, which is how do these things interact? Now, it may be that some immunologically very uh, well-educated person will have some answer to this I don't see coming, but here's the question. Your immune system functions on the basis that your cells will be able to recognize and uh, attach to the proteins for which they are uh, targeted, right? So you get spike protein into your system, your system figures out the electromagnetic sequences that result in antibodies and or T cells being able to stick to this thing. And that's how it works, right? Now, if you get a vaccine, right, that generates spike protein, those spike proteins, which are not associated with virus, will stick to those cells and antibodies that are targeted at them there comes a point at which you may saturate those things and you may in fact open the door to COVID because the point is your immune system was busy dealing with particles that weren't associated with virus and that let virus get through, you know, in some other way. Yep. That is at least plausible, mm -hmm. right? So now there has been guidance in the last week or so that says if you've had COVID, you should get one mm -hmm. uh, of the two vaccinations rather than two, right? So that is at least moving in the direction of there's a question here. But my point is that question was on the table from day one. And even if Should nothing else is true, if it is the case that this vaccine is as good as we think it is and as safe as people say it is, then the point is the people who've had COVID would be a lower priority because they are already at least somewhat vaccinated. And therefore, if the idea is get the vaccine to as many people as possible, the policy that says get the vaccine no matter whether you've had COVID or not is going to kill people because it's going to leave some people unprotected. So that's a, it's again a problem of simple rubrics, and that's exactly the third reason that I was going to put on the table, which you just landed at, which is the third reason not to prioritize getting the vaccine if you've had COVID-19, is that if we are being told the truth, and I believe we are in this regard, that we don't have enough supply, and that we are trying to distribute it as the vaccines as effectively and efficiently as possible to the people who need it most, then the people who almost certainly have onboard endogenously, endogenously generated immunity already should not be first in line for the vaccine. Yep. There's a, if there's a supply problem, the people who are particularly high risk from the vaccine, um, like people with autoimmune diseases or I think pregnant women and children, um, probably shouldn't be first in line. And people who are likely already to have immunity that they themselves generated should not be first in line. Yep. And I would say we can add another reason for, uh, for skepticism here, at least for the already exposed or already infected with COVID once crowd, mm -hmm. which is the way these vaccines work the mRNA is going to get into cells. It's going to cause the production of spike proteins, which are going to be displayed by those cells. I believe the fate of those cells will then be that they will be targeted by um, T cells and killed, or they will have um, apoptosis programs activated. In other words, this, the body will deal with them like they're infected with the virus, mm -hmm. right? So the point is you're killing tissue. 
that's not going to be good for you either. So, you know, there are, let's put it this way, a logical analysis suggests okay. that there are all sorts of reasons that we should be doing a much more nuanced job rather than just wagging our finger at everybody and saying, everybody should get the vaccine because vaccine good. Right. <laughs> <laughs>